Let's get right to it. Apple's conference call kicking off right now. Josh Lipton is in Cupertino where he just spoke with Apple CEO Tim Cook. Hey, Josh. Mel, I did just have the opportunity to speak with Tim Cook. And, you know, last time I talked to Cook, he had emphasized this weakening Chinese economy exacerbated by these trade tensions. So I wanted to get um, his take now. And here's what he told me. He said, as we got into January, things have improved from where they ended in December. And that gives us some optimism. Of course, you don't know what will continue. But I would also point out that seems to map to trade tensions as well, that there is a bit more optimism in the air in January, or certainly I feel that anyways. I'm encouraged by the comments coming out of both countries. I did know also ask him about this Q2 guidance uh, 55 to 59 billion at the midpoint that's lower than let's call it the 59 billion that the street was at. Uh, so I asked him about that forecast Cook saying well we don't attach our guidance to what the street is looking for we attach it to what we can do and so we think we can do 55 to 59 billion considering the currency situation etc it's strong guidance revenue was down 5% last quarter but only down 3% of constant currency and the effect will be more this quarter on currency than it was in the last quarter. This call is just now kicking off. I'm going to hop on it and bring you guys headlines as they come. Mel, back to you. You know, Josh, it's interesting. The way Tim Cook was talking about China trade, it made it seem like all of China's, uh, all of Apple's woes in China are directly tied to trade as opposed to a slowing Chinese economy. Well, I think he sees that they're kind of connected. I think he sees his argument has been, Mel, that mm -hmm. it's a slowing Chinese economy and that is made worse and exacerbated by trade. I think other analysts, and I'm sure you're going to hear them on the call, have questions about what's going on in China more broadly. I think yeah. on the call you're going to probably hear um, analysts talk about, listen, are there other factors? Is it pricing? Is it um, uh, nationalism of the Chinese? Are some Chinese just not as taken with the new or the latest and greatest iPhones? I would expect you're getting a lot of questions on that starting right now. Yeah, absolutely. Josh, thank you. Josh Lipton and Cupertino will check in with you a little bit later on. The stock, as we mentioned at the top, now back at the levels it was at uh, before it warned about, uh, about earnings a month ago. So is the worst over for this stock, Guy? Personally, I don't think so. I mean, the quarter was fine. The, the inline EPS, revenue slightly bigger. Um, in terms of services, we all talk about services. It's now 12.9% of this quarter's revenue. I guess that's okay. Uh, services revenue is up 19% year over year. iPhones, disappointing, I think. Guidance, disappointing. But maybe the market is saying, you know what, valuation is too compelling. They sandbagged us last quarter. Let's get in now before the stock continues to move higher. I, I would think fade here, but I'll probably be wrong. The idea that perhaps they're giving conservative guidance so that they won't miss two quarters in a row is a pretty compelling thought. Yeah, I mean, I think this is all positioning. They warned, you saw the stock rally between 12 and 15 percent. Seems like a good entry point. I'm still along the name. I don't think with slowing iPhone sales and with slowing growth that it's going to be a long story, this bullish story. So I would fade the pop as well as Guy said. I asked Josh about uh, trade, China trade versus China economy, because I understand that one affects the other, but there wasn't a turnaround in Chinese economic data there in wasn't. the month of January and the there month of December. There wasn't, and also mean, the concern was whether or not the iPhone is too expensive for the Chinese market, right? And so there's a lot of competition over there. So that's what we'll find out on the call. I think the call is going to be really important in this particular case. On the surface, numbers were good enough to keep Apple at these levels, but they're really going to have to come out and say, listen, we are not seeing any more slowdown in China. And we're actually seeing a bit of a pickup. We have a plan to get these $1,000 phones out the door. And guess what? Service is really picking up. If they say all those type of things, then I think you can buy the stock. So in China, not just the, the trade, but the dynamics of there's, there's good and bad. So you've got actually a renewal in the application of gaming apps, which some people think right. will help sequentially. Um, you have then the fresh Huawei kind of indictments and arrests and, and the dynamics that be very clear. There, there is, if there's not explicit, there's certainly some implicit pressure on Chinese consumers to leave the iOS system. It, there's no question about it. So people should be concerned that the news today, I actually thought that that was going to weigh on the stock. Earnings are much more important coming into today. Uh, but nonetheless, that was some tough news overnight. And, and I think the bottom line here is the elongation of the 
essentially the cycle for these phones, the ASP pressure, uh, the dynamics that I think are, are not going to go away anytime soon, I mean this is a stock that the street is actually still overweight on, but nobody said or most folks are saying it's very range bound. No one's willing to say that this stock actually has near term upside. Yeah, I think the Huawei thing is interesting as well because as the Commerce Secretary has said, what's going on with Huawei is completely separate from what is going on in terms of US China trade talks. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we could have some sort of a deal, but these charges that, could, that the company faces they might could be continue. Just saying it could that be an ongoing too. story. They might be just saying that yeah, too. Could be. To kind of separate it and give them leverage. They'd never say that they were tied together. But the fact of the matter is, is that the US will not want its allies or its companies to buy any equipment from Huawei in 5G. That's right. And that is an ongoing security issue regardless of the charges against the company at this that's point. That's probably not going away anytime yeah. soon, right? I mean, so yeah, I think that's a, clearly a potential headwind. I'll mention this because, listen, there were a lot of good things here. Let's mention, you know, the other products which they break out. $7.3 billion, that's not insignificant. Uh, 33%. So you, yeah, and so when you, yeah. you layer in other products and services, now you're talking about close to $19 billion over an $81 billion. Now you're talking about 21%, 22% of revenue. So you are growing on the right lines. The, the problem is, though, for Apple, and, and I'm still a shareholder, is that it was never given that valuation that you could brag about. It was never given that growth valuation. It was sort of given a stable valuation. So now if we start to say, okay, it's just okay, what happens to valuation? I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but it's certainly oh, not going saying. certainly not going right. up. You're not getting it. So that's why the, multiple that's expansion. for me why the conference call is so important because they have to give you some hope. They have to give you, hey, you know what? We are going to grow. We are going to turn this company from a hardware company into a services company, and it's happening right now. Unless they do that, I think you kind of meander around. It doesn't mean it's a bad buy. It just means that you're not going to get that excitement uh, and a new shareholder base coming in. Folks, I, I think this is all about positioning. And, and you know, coming into this earnings number, the Buy side was actually much more cautious than the sell side. In fact, buy side has 40 million iPhone units, roughly fiscal Q2, significantly below where the street is. I, I just think it's all about positioning. It's all about sentiment. There's, the, the, this company is not markedly different than it was two quarters ago in terms of what's, what the trends were on iPhones. It's totally sentiment. And, and I think sentiment has gotten you know, overly extreme, and it's been made extreme by the dynamic in China, which is believed to be the key to Apple sales. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, it may be in the short run, but right now, now I actually think the positioning is the biggest part of the story. And the lack of transparency into their numbers. Yep. I mean, taking a metric away makes them a different company from what they were two quarters ago, however you want to call it. We've got less information. That's right. That's, that's what's, to Steve's point about uh, positioning, mm -hmm. Tim's as well, it's interesting, right? So they warned the stock was trading 144. iPhone sales revenue is down, I think, 16% year over year. And now you have the stock trading 161. So you talk about, well, this is going to come out wrong. But a bit of sleight of hand, and all of a sudden the stock is higher than it was. That came out wrong. When it, <laughs> but it, you understand, I think yes, the folks I, at home know exactly know what, what I'm saying. saying. So basically you get less clarity, but now you heard as soon as we come out with the services number, people want to know, well, I want to break down the services number. I want to see where exactly the services number. So they're not going to get clarity through the iPhone sales, but they're going to go to services, and now they're going to pick through the data. Right, because there's right. less data to focus on. Right. You're going to focus on services. I was talking to an analyst today from Raymond James, Chris Queso, and he was saying that a big bulk of services is Apple Care. So what happens when unit sales go down, which we don't know because they won't release unit sales? Right. You don't need Apple Care on your phone. You don't need right, exactly. And again, the whole services growth is based on this unit growth idea. And so I think they really, they really, really botched that last quarter when they uh, just kind of shocked everybody by saying we're not going to break things down. So they have to come out and give a little bit more information on what the company is going to look like. Otherwise, I think they've got a real credibility problem on Wall Street. But I, so I, I hear what you're saying, and but everything you just said to me means that the market needed to make an adjustment. Well, guess what, folks? It, it made a forty adjustment. So, you know, they, they, they told sure. you stuff you didn't want to hear. They told you were doing things a little differently. They didn't change their business overnight. Uh, it's just the market's perception of them changed overnight. And again, I think the buy side of the street actually b believes that this stock is cheap right now.